So, um, I've always set off people's gaydar pretty badly. And, um, and like, that's not too bad of a deal unless you're in Wisconsin and you've got no money and you've got debt and um, you don't really have any friends and you're definitely not getting anywhere with girls at all um, for a really long time. And so, when, in that kind of setting, it doesn't help um, to set off everyone's gaydar. Um, I mean, sure, like, you know, I, I, I wear decent clothes and I listen to a lot of more sets sometimes, but I, I, was, I was interested in, you know, making friends in Wisconsin, and I, and I wasn't making it happen. And especially there, where the typical straight guy's profile is extra, extra, extra large in a Green Bay Packers t-shirt, um, I, I just didn't fit it, right? So, I don't know if you guys remember the magazine, it could still be going, Talk Magazine. It was the magazine that was going to save magazines back in 1999. Um, when people still believe that, uh, that this whole internet thing would never catch on. And the first issue of Talk Magazine um, had one really remarkable thing in it. Because in even in 1989, I knew I had, this, uh, I had this gaydar issue, right? So there was this, just one page. It was just a picture of this like, handsome guy in a nice apartment. And uh, he had on really good clothes. And the description said he knew how to cook. And he knew how to talk to people. And, and he was a metrosexual. And that's what that came from. And when I saw that page, I was like, that's who I am. <laughs> Metrosexuals weren't really playing in Wisconsin uh, in the mid early 2000s. And so I'm in Wisconsin, and, uh, and shortly after I arrived there, there was this, this salon called the Cha-Cha Lounge, and I picked up a flyer of theirs one day, and it said that if you win it every three weeks, they'd give guys a big discount on haircuts. And that was, to me, like, I like haircuts, and that was a way to buy a friend, and I didn't have any. Um, so I started going every three weeks. And while I may be a metrosexual, I'm still also a hairy guy from Kansas. And, and so, like, I'm more and more realizing that, like, my eyebrows are really starting to grow together. Like, they're less plural than they used to be, and more singular, and like, it's really bugging me, so I'm thinking, you know, my hairstylist, Janet, her name was Janet Lust, no joke, that was a real name, Janet Lust, um, says, like, you know, I'll do your eyebrows, just seven bucks more when you come in, I'll do your eyebrows, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, I want to, because, like, plucking them, I just took forever, I just couldn't do it, I could never quite get them all out, and so, she was really pushing me to do it, and I was talking to my friends about it, only people who didn't live in Wisconsin, though, because no one in Wisconsin could know I was even contemplating this. Um, and they're saying, no, like, you know, either, like, you know, your eyebrows will grow back, like, super huge, or, like, you know, everyone will think you're a girl, or, I don't know, and I'm just, like, totally nervous about it, but I want to do it. And so Janet's pushing me on, you know, I see every three weeks, she keeps bringing it up, keeps bringing it up. So it takes me months to, like, finally get into, like, the emotional space where, you know, I'm ready to let someone wax my eyebrows. And, um, but then I do. And I'm really proud of myself, too, because I knew going into it that Janet expected me to be a real pansy about it. Like, she was going to do that first tear, and I was going to be like, oh, God! You know, but I was cool, man. I was a tough guy about having my eyebrows waxed. Like, that was no problem. And she waxed them first, and then she cut my hair because she said, you know, it makes your skin kind of red after you tear them off. And, you know, I was sensitive about it. And so, you know, she's like, let it kind of like, get, you know, let the redness go down before you go into work. And so I thought that was a good idea. And so then I'm done, and she's like, you know, how do you think they look? And I'm like, I'm feeling really emotionally raw at this moment. Like, I'm feeling really scared about people seeing with me with my eyebrows rock. So I'm, I'm just like, ah, oh, fine, I don't know, they're good. But then, like, by the time I bike into work, I, like, go into the public restroom, the bottom floor of my building, which is a long way from my office, and I look in the mirror some more, and, like, they just seem, like, infinitesimally off symmetry. I'm like, this one is just a little bit bigger than that one. And so I go back to the salon, and I make Janet just, like, plush two more things out. And she thinks I'm ridiculous, but it's fine. So here's the part that's unbelievable, right? I finally get back to my office, and I have this coworker who's this ridiculously ugly, pathetic little woman that I can't stand, and um, we're in this like open plan office, and I sit right next to her, and so I come in, and I'm just like, no one look at me, I go right to my desk, and she's in this meeting with one of our other coworkers, and this like IT guy from another office, and they're all talking, and I'm like, that's fantastic, they're all talking, no one's looking at me, please no one notice that I just got my eyebrows done, and they're like finishing up, and then they start just chatting, like people do at the end of meetings, and somehow like salons come up, and then my like awful ugly coworker, um, start saying how her stylist is always wanting her to wax her eyebrows. She just thinks that's so ridiculous and what would it really matter? 
and I'm like, it won't matter for you because there's nothing that will help your face. But, um, but I'm just like, please, nobody look at me, nobody look at me, nobody look at me. And then the dude who's the IT guy turns and he looks at me and he's like, you have really symmetrical eyebrows. Those are so, like, they're so symmetrical. My other coworker is like, yeah, you know, you don't normally see guys with eyebrows that look quite that good. And I'm just like, yeah, I've never really thought about it before. Um, but thanks. And I turn around and I get seriously busy with something. And now, obviously, you know, my theater teacher told me, like, just if you spit in public, just call attention to it because no one can laugh at you. Now I tell everyone I wax my eyebrows. It's like, I'm Metro. That's how we roll. You know? <laughs>